Welcome back to the channel, my friends. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and today we're taking a look at the General's Handbook and the new season for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. This video is brought to you by CMO Games. More on that later. General's Handbook 2023-2024. Warhammer Age of Sigmar prepares for a new season in Frozen Andor. The mortal realms are in the cusp of change. The Seraphon have returned with renewed vitality. Sigmar's Dawnbringer Crusades now forge their way into the dark to reclaim lands lost to the forces of chaos carrying the blazing torch of civilization with them. Bearing Sigmar's light is no easy task, and those attempting to claim the foothold in Gur face resistance from savage beasts, ambitious rivals, and even the land itself. We have emerged from the claustrophobic tunnels of Galat into the icy tundras of Antor, where sorcery runs rampant. In this inhospitable waste, frozen landmasses crack and reform, revealing locusts of amber magic to harness, realm gates to seize, resources to harvest. The Harsh Land is the setting for the next season of Warhammer Age of Sigmar, competitive play, which runs for an entire year. This is an important change in format, as it means the new season is double the length of the previous ones. This book will be the go-to match play resource for twice as long, all the way through the summer next year. You can still look forward to the quarterly balance updates to ensure that the metagame remains as balanced as possible. Uh, so this is an excellent change, and welcome. I definitely feel like the little six month seasons have been going too quickly. There's too many changes. Most people are not actually getting in enough games for it to be worth it to stay up to date on the seasons. So the idea of going to a one year season with still having like quarterly balance updates makes a ton more sense to me. And I think there's a great play on Games Workshop's part. They obviously have felt out the situation and realized that they're just moving things far too quickly. So yeah, definitely a big fan of that change. It may seem minor to some people, and realistically, the difference between buying one extra book or not is not a huge deal. I mean, it's every six months versus every one year. Uh, but the truth is, it's more about like adjusting your army, getting used to it, changing and using specific units. And overall, Warhammer in general, tabletop gaming in general, should move at a slower pace than like your typical like video games and stuff like that. Because there's a lot more that goes into it, actually building your army, painting your models, playtesting them, etc. General's Handbook Pitch Battles 2023-24 concentrates on the wizards who seek to profit from the primeval magic that suffices Antor, as well as those who hunt them down by using Nullstone artifacts to weather their empowered and unbridled spellcasting. In this battle pack, your wizard heroes with a wounds characteristic of 9 or less and who are not unique gain the Andorian Locust keyword. Each round, the player with the second turn can pick one hero to take advantage of the swelling magic in Andor with optimal focus. If they are an Andorian Locust, they can cast and unbind an extra spell that round. Otherwise, they gain a free command point for issuing commands. So we kind of got rid of the Galician champions, and now we're kind of turning them into our Andorian Locust. Same thing, they can't be unique, and they have to have less than 9 wounds. And then in this case, they specifically have to be a wizard hero. So optimal focus at the start of the battle round after priority is determined, the player taking the second turn can pick one friendly hero on the battlefield. If the hero is an Andorian Locust, they can attempt to cast one extra spell and attempt to unbind one extra spell in the battle round. If they are not an Andorian Locust, you receive one command point that can only be spent to allow that hero to issue a command. Players may also harness the primal magic of Andor, earning special dice which can be used to boost for spellcasting, unbinding, and dispelling rolls. Wizards be warned, however. Taming the feral magic of Gur comes with the risk of a primal miscast. An Andorian Locust can also cast from the lore of Primal Frost. Instead of picking a spell from their usual selection, such wizards might encircle their comrades with Biting Hoarfrost, completely changing their to hit, to wound, and rend characteristics until the next hero phase. So lore of Primal Frost, Hoarfrost. Hoarfrost is a spell that has a casting value of 8 and a range of 12. If successfully cast, pick one friendly unit wholly within range and visible to the caster. Pick one melee weapon profile on the unit's war scroll and roll a d3. Change the to hit, to wound, or rend characteristic of the melee weapon to match the result until the start of the next hero phase. For example, if the result was 2, you could change either the to hit characteristic to 2+, plus, the to wound characteristic to 2+, plus, or the rend characteristic to minus 2. So that is extremely strong. I would imagine that in general, uh, since a lot of armies don't have like super high rend characteristics, that is going to change the way that certain units perform in the game. There are a lot of units out there that are almost unkillable or just a real anvil in the middle of the board. And suddenly giving a unit with a bunch of attacks the potential to do like minus 3 AP 
or a unit that has like already high damage but not high rend, uh, this could be massive. Very, very cool. Definitely going to mix up the game a lot. Armies without any spell casting can take Nullstone Adornments to weather the hazardous sorcery of Andor. The hand-carved Nullstone icon is one such enhancement, allowing heroes to unbind spells or dispel an endless spell with a chance of unbinding another each time they succeed. Wow, this article has been absolutely riddled with mistakes. So Nullstone Adornment, hand-carved Nullstone icon. The bearer can attempt to unbind one spell or attempt to dispel one endless spell in the enemy hero phase in the same manner as a wizard. Each time the bearer successfully unbinds a spell or dispels an endless spell using this ability, the bearer can attempt to unbind one additional spell in that phase. So very cool. If you start rolling hot, you could essentially shut down multiple spells or endless spells. On top of this, there are 12 brand new battle plans and everything else you'd expect from a general's handbook providing you with a whole year's worth of content for competitive play. As with previous General's Handbooks, you'll also find the core rules and up-to-date profiles for universal endless spells. Now a quick message from today's sponsor. CMO Games has been selling Games Workshop products online for over 20 years. They carry the full line of Games Workshop products, including Warhammer 40,000, Age of Sigmar, Necromunda, Blood Bowl, Paint Tools, and more. Almost all Games Workshop products are priced at 15% off MSRP. CMO Games takes pre-orders for most Games Workshop products released at their earliest date possible. 12.01 a.m. on Saturday, they go live. Most of these pre-order products are also priced at 15% off MSRP. CMO Games offer free shipping in the U.S. 48 with an order of $50 or more. Their customer service is top-notch and they ship most orders within 24 hours. Visit CMOGames.com using the affiliate link in the description and let them know that you heard about CMO Games from Warhammer Man. Now back to the video. All right, so now let's talk about these new regiments of renown. Four new regiments of renown, each with a brand new hero, are also coming soon. They were first previewed at Warhammer Fest 2023, and like the previous Regiments of Renown boxes, each collection fits into a core battalion that allows them to be taken in any Grand Alliance army other than their home faction, even if they break the Allied Points threshold. So we saw these four Dawnbringer Regiments of Renown all have a unique new hero in them, so that is pretty cool. So first we have the Fire Slayers. The Blazing Fire Slayers of Fiori's Flamebearers are led by Grimhold Exile Fiori, a survivor of a destroyed magma hold who stokes his fellow fire slayers into action through fanatical fervor. Alongside Fiori, fight 10 Volkite Berserkers, 5 Hearthguard Berserkers, and 5 Auric Hearthguard, who hurl themselves into combat to uphold their ancient martial traditions. So pretty cool, and you have some flexibility because you could alternatively build all 10 of these the same if you wanted, and then the new character is pretty cool, and then of course some of the uh, core units there as well. From a diseased shroud of fog emerges Plugos Shutterhood. Under the miserable direction of the eponymous Harbingers of Decay, this band of despendant warriors comprises five putrid blight kings, leaking vile filth from corrupted protrusions, and a pair of Puscoil blight lords. So we see the new character here, a couple of the uh, blight lords as well, and then some blight kings. Not a bad box. Definitely a big fan of this model. The old model was super cool and actually held up really nicely. Uh, but this guy is absolutely awesome. And that would be really fun to paint. Caught in the entrapturing delusion propagated by the bestial vampire rulers, the Flesh Eater Courts believe themselves part of an elaborate world of royal courts and knightly vows. Jerian's delegation ride out under the behest of the Morrow Scroll Herald Jerian, whose diplomatic gifts are nothing but bloody flesh and bone. He is accompanied by 20 slavering crypt ghouls, 3 soaring batwing crypt flayers, and 3 repugnant crypt horrors. So another nice set here. Uh, we have the character here in the middle, 20 of the ghouls, and then again you could build all 6 of these the same if you wanted, or uh, do like your separate builds. Braggett's Bottle Snatchers are a rambunctious mob of squigs and gits under the loose command of Braggett, a rabble rouser with an enchanted skull that boosts his volume. Braggett bursts out with 10 bouncing squig hoppers, a squig herd containing 2 squig herders and 10 squigs, and a gathering of 5 wise grots known as Goblapalooza. So very cool, I am definitely a big fan of this new model. Goblapalooza is awesome as well. All 5 of these dudes are sweet characters. And then of course, you can never have too many squigs. So very cool set. Definitely a big fan of all these. I like the new characters as well. And uh, looking forward to the new season also. Seems like there's going to be some cool stuff going on there. The uh, spell casting factions obviously are going to be at a nice advantage here as well. So we'll see how that all plays out. The General's Handbook, Pitch Battles 2023, all four regiments of renown above and Harbingers, the first book of Dawnbringer narrative series will be available to pre-order soon. So very cool. Definitely glad to see that those regiments of renown will be coming soon. 
excited for the new General's Handbook and the new season of Age of Sigmar. And I think, honestly, the best change is that they're extending the season and making it a full year. I think this is an excellent decision. I think the six-month seasons are a mistake because it rushes the design team, it rushes production, and it puts unrealistic deadlines on a company that's already been struggling. So let me know what you think. Are you excited that they're extending to a year? Are you feel like you're going to miss out on some content because you like the six-month changes? Always like to hear back from you guys. If you're still watching the video and you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure to do so. Special thanks to CMO Games for sponsoring the video. Check them out to save 15%. That's it for today. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and, and I'm looking forward to the new season. I'm out of here.